Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making this really cool sci-fi heads-up display. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to delete everything, A and X. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some circular shaped HUD objects. So let's go Shift A, Mesh, and we're going to grab a Mesh Circle. I'm going to go into Edit Mode by hitting Tab. And I want to increase the number of subdivisions. So I'm going to hit F3 and I'm going to type subdivide. I'm going to hit E to extrude and S to scale. And I'm just going to bring it in. Then I'm going to go to three, hit three on my keyboard to go to face mode. Select, hit, hold on Alt and select this entire row of faces. And then what I'm going to do is come up here to select and we're going to select um, checker deselect. And I'm going to hit X to delete faces. So that will delete every other face. I'm going to throw on a shader. I'm just going to click new here under the shader tab to create a new material on this object. And I want to make this um, an emission shader. So by default, we have the principled BSDF surface. Let me just show you what that looks like over here. If we go to the shader editor, I'll just bring this up here. So you can see in the shader editor what this looks like. We've got the principled BSDF surface relates to this, the principled BSDF shader node. I can switch this out here. It's kind of a quick way to swap between different base type shaders. And I could just switch this to an emission shader and you can see the node changes automatically. So that's kind of how those things are linked and the way they work together. All right, cool. I'm going to give it kind of a red color, I think. So I'm going to come down here, just grab some red and just turn up its strength a little bit to like five or something. I'm going to come to my render settings and I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections. And I'm going to go ahead and go to rendered view so we can see what this thing looks like. So let's uh, let's take this and let's hit Shifty to duplicate and S to scale just to bring it down to make a smaller one like that. And I might go into edit mode and let's see, I'm going to hit A to select all the faces. I'm going to switch this to normal and I'll switch this to individual origins. This will allow me to make adjustments to all these faces based on each one's location. So you can see if I hit S and let's say Y, for example, you can see I get this crazy spiral pattern and you can see we're scaling these guys on the Y individually based on where they are and what their, uh, where their normal is facing or the direction of their face is facing. Likewise, S and X will give me that. So that's pretty cool. We can really play with these a bit. There we go. S and X will make them thinner dashes. That's pretty cool. I can scale this down a bit. We can have these intersect that would make them look like they're contained in, in each other. Maybe duplicate this one and scale it down. Just keep that offset like that. Rotate this one maybe. Um, you can also play with height with these, like bring this one up a little bit more than the others. And that can play into it if you want sort of a 3D holographic display. All right, now let's create like some highlight lines that can sort of expand out like they're bringing us more information about whatever this target is seeing. So I'm going to go for a shift A. I'm going to go for a, let's see, a curve and I'll go for path and I'll just bring it over here. So it's separate to everything. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm also going to switch this curve. I'm going to click up here to curve and set spline type to poly. That will make this curve have like sharp edges. I'm also going to come over to the spline tab and under geometry, extrude value a little bit and just extrude this out just to kind of get it, um, have a little bit of depth to it. And then what I want to do is go back into edit mode, hit A to select all. And I'm going to come over here to the side panel to item. And I want to rotate these guys. I'm going to take the tilt to 90 degrees. That will flatten it out so that this extrusion happens um, along the, the grid plane. And let's come over here. We can assign the same material to it for now. And in fact, let's actually swap this up a little bit. Um, thinner. Let's go over to the material tab and I'm going to click the double paper icon that will make a duplicate of this material. You see the name changed. And this one, I'm going to make it kind of a bluish color. And what we can do now is just hit seven to look straight down. I'm going to go into edit mode and I can position these in different spots. So I can come up here maybe and grab, I don't know, let's grab that, bring this uh, to here. It'd be nice if it kind of followed the gaps. Let's go to vertex snapping, turn snapping on. And then what we can do is grab this and go G and X and then slide our mouse onto that. That'll snap it in line. 
let's see if we can make some more of these. I can hit Shift D to duplicate. So grab that nerve path, Shift D, and I can rotate from the center point of my scene. If I come over here and select uh, 3D cursor, because my 3D cursor is right there in the center. If yours isn't, you can go Shift S and cursor to world origin right there, and that'll stick it right there. Now we can rotate off of this guy um, and put these in a few different spots. All right, now let's get some text in here. Text is really good for filling out a UI. Um, so let's go over here. Now, one, one cool trick for text. Let's go ahead and make a text object. So Shift A, and we're going to grab some text. Bring it over here. I'll assign one of our shiny materials. If you can hit Tab, you can go to Edit Mode. You can you know type text and or, you know, do whatever you want. But one cool trick here is we, if we switch over to the text editor, you can grab Template and go Python. And these are a bunch of type Python templates uh, set up for you to create add-ons and stuff in Blender. So we can grab one of these. And we hit A to select all and C to copy. And come over here and select that and paste. And then hit tab to exit edit mode and scale this guy right down back to individual origins or medium point. And now we've got a lot of code. This can look quite nice. This kind of stuff. Okay, another thing that's really useful are grids. So let's go ahead and go Shift A, Mesh, and Shift A mesh grid. That will create a grid. You can see it's got a bunch of um, uh, vertexes and stuff. It's all subdivided, ready for us to go. And then we can come here to the wrench icon and click on Add Modifier. And we're just going to search for the wireframe modifier. Put that on there. And let's grab one of our glowy materials. Oops, do more blue. And the wireframe mod modifier is great for this kind of stuff because um, it just takes whatever the mesh is and turns it into a wireframe. And we can Bring that thickness right down. Um, another thing that's really fun for HUDs is to use the wave modifier. So let's just shift D to duplicate, bring this over, and then I'm going to type in the ocean. Sorry, not the wave modifier, the ocean modifier. There we go. And I'm going to take the size down, and that will really scrunch this thing. And then what we can do is I'll just pop it up above the wireframe, and now we're going to get this cool wireframe of this ocean. So I'm going to scale that up and then scale the object down. So, and then we can roll the time to get different types of wave patterns. These are really cool. We should like put them above a grid and scale Z to really enhance them. Enhance. So on that, we can do other things with the wireframe modifier. For example, like we could just come in here and add in stuff that has interesting geometry to begin with, like an isosphere. Type in the wireframe modifier, throw that on there. Give it a glowy shader. Okay, cool. So with these different elements, um, we can really make a really cool HUD with just a couple of these things using the wireframe modifier and these glowing shaders and some text and stuff. So let's go ahead and create a camera. I'm going to go Shift A and we're going to go for a camera. And I'm going to jump into my camera view. I'm going to come over to the View tab. I'm going to lock my camera to view. And I'll just zoom out a bit, get a good angle on this. And what I want to do is come over here to my camera tab. I'm going to turn up Passbar 2. So I'm going to go to Viewport Display, Passbar 2, drag this right up. Now, what's really cool about HUDs is if you have like a really reflective surface that they're sitting on. So let's do that. I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh Plane, and scale this way up. Grab Z and just bring it down so it's underneath everything. Come to my Material tab, click New, and we'll leave it as the principal BSDF. We're just going to take Roughness down all the way almost to black. I'll take the base color down as well, almost to black. Yeah. Now what we can do is start positioning these guys and getting stuff in place so it's a bit clearer. You can split your view if you want. If you come over here, grab the little cross icon and click and drag, and that will split your view. And uh, this way we can have two views, one where we can see what the camera sees and one that allows us to position stuff. Move these guys around, get some cool Positioning in place. I'm holding down, um, I'm hitting G to grab and then Shift Z, and that turns off Z movement. And that's a great way to kind of move, move objects sometimes. One of the things you can, one of the traps you can run into is just having too much visual noise. So clarity is really, uh, really important for making a good HUD. There we go. So that's another good opportunity there. So you can see how having those aligned really helps kind of sell that this is a UI that's trying to communicate something. Um, I feel like this grid line up here could be maybe a bit more 
One. All right, now to really make this thing pop, we're gonna go Shift B, grab our camera. We're gonna, I'm gonna come over here and grab my camera, and I'm gonna come down to depth of field, and I'm gonna turn that on right here. And then what I'm gonna do is turn my F step right down, and then bring my focus distance just on maybe this central object. That, then I'm gonna hold down Shift and bring my F step back up a bit. And that kind of thing really like Oof. looks so good. I love that when these glowy things go crazy with depth of field. It's a really, really nice look. Okay, so now we've got a really good base, right? This is very exciting looking HUD. It's got lots of interest going on. Um, now we can critique it a little bit and try and refine things and bring out some of this detail. So little things like adding in a bit more variation in the color here. So let's, let's select one of these and um, I'm gonna swap out some of these for blue ones. So we've got a little bit of um, blue color. Let's uh, let's take the red shader. Let's come over here to the shader editor and let's grab a Voronoi texture and a color ramp. And let's take the distance into the factor. And we're gonna switch this from Euclidean to Chebyshev. And then I'm going to take the color and I'm going to grab the white pip, click the color here, grab the color picker and select this red color that we're using already. And I'm going to set this to constant and I'll just drag this down a little bit and then plug this into the color. Now we're going to get a lot of breakup based on this shader because we've used it across everything. We're going to get it consistently. And uh, now we can use this to really bring in a lot of interesting detail. Now as a bonus, um, there's a cool way that you could use this with the real-time compositor. So we've made a ton of stuff, right? But we could take it all. Let's move our camera out of the scene collection. So this is everything that's in our HUD. What we can do is we can right click and select objects. And then that will select everything inside. And then I can control click my camera and actually let's create a new camera for this uh, camera. I'm going to grab that camera and move it with M out into the scene collection. I'm gonna look through that camera. I'm gonna look straight down with this guy. So I'm gonna go to my transform properties. I'll just zero everything out. Select objects, control click the camera, control P, parent object key transform. And then you can do stuff like come up here and turn on the compositor. Come up here, go to the compositor, click use nodes, and then grab like the lens distortion and just turn up the dispersion a bit. It's jitter, get a little bit of noise in there. Anyways, that's how you can, you could make this like a character's POV. You can animate these things, you know. Anyways, it's a bit of fun. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial today and learned a lot. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out all the other videos and check out the Patreon. We can get the uncut version of this tutorial. I go into a few deep dives, have a bit of fun. It's about an hour long. So if you wanna go check that out, you can get it if you join on Patreon or here on YouTube at the All Access Pass level and higher. Thank you to everyone who already supports the channel in all those different ways and supports it by watching the videos, just like you. Thank you very much. I hope you have a fantastic week. I will catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a great time.